Uh, greetings in the name of the Most High Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Lord, the One, the Way. The Way, the Truth, and the Life. And let's underscore double life. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men, provided by Him from the foundation of the world that he is the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. And I, I've just got to go read John 1 because I have I know we go over there. I've got certain pet scriptures, I, I admit it. But they just keep speaking to me day in and day out. And I want to be very, 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 I just can't get over how this is written. Please. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world and, the, and was made by, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Is there any doubt who this, who he is? What the mystery of Christ is all about? A stealth man who is truly God and man, are the only one who could pay the price because he wasn't like us. When religions state that he was in that way, pointing out some of the human foibles, being weak in the garden at Gethsemane, was he weak? When he cried to the Lord for, do I really have to do this? Take the cross, be a sacrifice. Is there no other way? Well, because he had every, he had to be a man to pay. But he had to be God to not be tainted. And in the sacrifice, the thing we all miss is, it's the renewable sacrifice. In other words, it's a picture of us cleansed, renewed in Him, the Lord. It's the, it's the, it's the paradigm of that. It's the paradigmatic model of what it is to be in Christ. It's truly unbelievable because it goes uh, several dimensions deep to this. Oh, I know people have discussed it, but I mean, you know, given my background in paradigmatic models from uh, my study of the history of religions, which took me to many places and listening to many people and reading many books. One in particular I liked was called The Sacred and Profane by Murci Eliada, who is... Um, some say the greatest historian of religions that has ever lived. He, he went and he practiced Hinduism, he practiced Christianity, he practiced them all. But he tied all the, the, the sacred traditions together into certain paradigms to show the universality of human consciousness in how we are homo religiosus, in how we become spiritual and religious, and, and what we do with our homes and our rituals and our religions and our lives, and our language, and our music, and our clothing, and our traditions. And when we see that, and when I read that book, The Sacred and the Profane, I feel a bond with all humanity. A bond with all humanity. And I, I see God working through all humanity. Well, you know, uh, we have to understand that, for example, God's not going to make all these people to throw them away because <clears throat> they didn't get the right education. I mean, that, of course, is ridiculous, don't you think? Now, I dance with the one who brung me. That's what I've been doing. The Bible and Jesus are the things that I had received 
when I cried out and when I was lifted up. But when I was lifted up by God, it, there was there was no Jesus being talked about. I mean, it was just, I was having a supernatural experience of being lifted into the air by God, by the Father. And then I took to him all this controversy about Jesus. I said, you know, Lord, Jesus is thrown around here and there. And then I had a, a, a vision of Jesus. And he said, don't buy into me. It's a ruse. It's fake. Don't buy into me, Zeph, because, you see, Jesus has just been used to, to create all this hostility and divisions between people. You know, the, truly, I, I was almost being told to, in a sense, just be with the Father. And then eventually I realized that there was uh, an attempt at stealing away what I had just received by telling me, don't go to Jesus. It's not the truth. You've got the truth now with the Father. I guess I was on my way to becoming a Jew in the traditional Jesus-rejecting sense of the word. Um, perhaps, or perhaps... I could have rejected the Bible as well because a man put a Bible in my hand at that time a couple days after that experience. And we didn't put the Torah there, you know, the Pentateuch. He put the whole Bible in my hand. It happened to be a John MacArthur study Bible, and, that, and that's fine. There's, there's good ideas there with John MacArthur. I mean, you know, it is what it is. There's also error. It's from a very evangelical point of view. It doesn't deviate. It's very conservative. Um, uh, there's a lot of time in that Bible that's, you know, I didn't really read too much the, the notes at the bottom of each, you know, the, the study notes. I, I found some of them offensive or, you know, they seemed arbitrary, some of them, you know, and, uh, like a person just sort of making it up as they go along. And other sections seemed right on. And it was kind of a mix of opinion and what looked like scholarship and, and, and closer to a fact. But I just couldn't do it. I, uh, I, uh, I was up at three this morning doing a podcast that went, you know, two and a half, three hours and the power went out and I'm exhausted right now. So this, I, I just feel terrible that I, even though I've uploaded it sitting there at Dropbox, I still feel I have to restrict it. I gave my best effort this morning, folks, but it just seemed like a hackneyed kind of, it just it starts and stops. And there were things that just didn't make sense and you know, they made sense, but then wild prophetic statements like, I'm not gonna say what I said. I just thought, well, they were said in the spirit of prophecy, I suppose, but it was really, you know, I don't need to put myself out there in that way. Because people misunderstand. <clears throat> they don't, they don't see. Sometimes things are meant symbolically, you know, to be taken as a metaphor or sometimes literally a symbol. And sometimes things are destroyed in the spirit, even though there's a physical manifestation upon the earth left, but it's become a vestige because the thing itself has been slain. And so a lot of this, a lot of things that's hard to make sense in this kind of hard fangled 3D situation. Well, I'll try to summarize some of the points. I mean, one, I had seen a movie, <clears throat> and well, it seems that lately I've seen some movies. Uh, this one was called Southpaw. It was a very excellent movie, and I highly recommend it to anyone, because any, anyone could enjoy it. And it had a lot of good values in it, and traditional values, and had a guy praying in it, and it had, you know, 
had the word God in it at one point, and you know, I just I just couldn't really see see a movie like this while well, you can because you know the the future is about destroying everything we hold dear, every idea, every every um, aspect of what we might call morals or even morale, but morals and uh, things that are good, things that are bad, you know, decency and you know, um, good versus evil, just the basics are under assault and under attack. I mean, tried, they're trying to turn them around. And, well, let's face it, the people here, especially in this country, they've been lousy at defending their language, lousy at defending any form of culture, lousy at defending God, lousy at defending decency, lousy at defending common sense. So when things like that are not revered, my friends, the society soon collapses, which I must prepare you for, but at the same time, God is blessing his saints because he's given you, and this is the most important part of the podcast that you did not hear. He is giving you your whole life, you've been stripped of power. People around you have had power, even supernatural powers, but not you. No, you've had to be patient. You've had to be. You kind of remember you came from somewhere else and you feel like you were you were restored at one point. You were you 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 have a sense you had a some kind of you know it's almost as if you have a memory of being like a a superhero, a comic book hero. And now you're here whimpering. Whimpering like the little like Neptune when the sea witch got done with him, right? He was a shriveling, shrinking little thing. Not the big, strong Neptune, if you remember the... Well, when my daughter was little, we played the little mermaid, and, you know, and the rest of the Disney folly. Thank God it had no ill effect on her. She did not become... <clears throat> um, it may have, I, you know, I mean, I'll have to ask her about it, but it seems like it didn't. Of course, she just seems like a good egg. She uh, <laughs> she calls me to tell me stuff, you know, about morals and virtue and things. You know, I'm like, wow, you know, gosh, I was so opposite from her when I was her age. But we need kids like her and younger to 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 come to 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 make up for what their parents have screwed up completely. Which we, our generation, was all about me, me, me. You know, I'm 61 now, so. It was all about me, okay, the 80s, you know, the go-go years. It, we, we became intoxicated with me and my TV set and my latte and my Porsche and my this and my that. It became me, 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 me. And the restaurant and the scene. And I saw, had my fill. I guess I realize at this stage of life, you know, I'm, at least by now, you need to realize that the material realm is not our home. And although it's nice to have things, sure, you know, it helps with my music and things like that. You know, it's nice to have tools. It's not absolutely essential. So... Anyway, I'm going to lay this on you. So the Lord is gifting his people with powers, if you will, or strength with more faith, which means more, more miracles, you see. With stronger faith, you can heal everyone. With strong faith, you can change the weather. With strong faith, you can walk on water. With strong faith, well, let's read a little bit of that, shall we? I want to go to Hebrews, you know, the typical cliche. Well, they become cliches for a reason. Uh, where are we? Where's my Hebrews? Why is this in alphabetical order? This is, I want it the order that it's written. Okay. Uh... 
Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by the elders obtained a good report. Uh, for by it, I'm sorry, excuse me. The el for, for by faith, the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. One more time. Uh, the language, it's still more accurate with the King Jim, um, you know, or the Geneva or whatever. It's still going to be more. I'm sorry, you know, I, I, but when you go to the more modern day, they take license and they summarize things and, you know, it, it, it doesn't make the same sense. So we have to struggle with this thou and thine. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Someone was asking me about this the other day. By which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he, being dead, yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch, was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. With faith alone pleases God. You're starting to get a glimpse of where I'm going with this. But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a, uh, a new wander of them that diligently seek him. I'm sorry, a rewarder of them. Well, Trish, I think the eyes are finally telling me Go ahead and put the glasses on. Put on. I've had to put the glasses on. Yeah, three. But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So only with faith will you diligently seek him because you what was the faith to? Because you know he reward, reward, reward. What happens when I share the word of God? It goes out. It does amazing things. It does not come back void. Reward. In so doing, I'm seeking him because I believe. I have faith. Because to have faith in God means a thing unseen. Maybe the elephant in the room. <laughs> yeah. To me, it's hard to miss, but that's just me. By faith, Noah, being warned of God about the things not seen yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to saving the saving of his house, by which he condemned the world and became heir to the righteousness, to the to, heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should, after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out, not knowing whither he went. Now, this is a very important uh, piece of scripture here. When Abraham went, he knew not where he was going. He wandered. Often along the way, he would be tested by the faith. He'd be given a little more faith. And also, the ultimate test, of course, was his beloved, 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 beloved number one son to sacrifice him on Mount Moriah, which then was God's ultimate test of faith for Abraham. And he didn't succeed all the time, but obviously he succeeded enough so that the consequences of his faith was to be the father of, of many nations, the father of a great nation, and basically to give us 
the, 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 the opportunity to heal the breach with God, to become sons and daughters of the Most High God through his faith, the seed of which guaranteeing entrance into the temple of God, which is God, of course. And all that language I just use is kind of not metaphorical, but it's spiritual language, not meaning a literal thing. But all this is invisible. You being the seed of Abraham through your faith in Jesus Christ. You being the chosen of God. Have entered into the temple of God. Hence are one with God. Hence uh, uh, is the completion of the sacrifice unto God of all humanity. Through faith you have received it in total. And in a sense become the new Jerusalem, if you will, or the finished work. Which I take that as like a finished work. So, through faith, I step up here and open the microphone hoping not to make a fool of myself. Sometimes it doesn't work because I'm human. But there have been amazing things that have happened on this F report through faith. One of which is my survival. Not one, not two, but several, several times where it was a done deal as far as the angel of death is concerned. Not today, angel. Not today. The close of, of which one one incident was in a hotel room in Alaska two years ago with this upper respiratory problem that was not contagious and not a flu but had all the symptoms thereof. And many died from this in this country and the, and the press was forced to squelch it because there were many, many thousands, far more than Ebola, dying around the country from this. And um, as I said, it, people who had the most vulnerability of dying were people who went to the hospital because when they treat it with a flu shot and things like that, it somehow made it worse or tipped them over the edge. In fact, I think Alex Jones's, uh, I will say uncle, passed away from this. This very same thing I had. It lasts a number of months. It's, it's not the, I've had other things like this, but they were given to me in poison, you know, in food, on, in order to murder me. Uh, all of those kind of incidents, including being gang stalked, being around people, then they turn on you, that sort of thing that, that Paul has written about, experienced. Um, all because of my faith in Jesus Christ. But by the same token, my faith brought me through. The, the, the Lord was not ready to, to have me go to the dust. Psalm 16 comes to mind, should, at, at Psalm 30 rather, should, should the dust praise you, Lord? What good is it if I go down into the grave? How could I worship you then? No, it was not time yet to take that portion of faith off the planet. So through miraculous healing, I remember I got the scriptures out. I, 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 I sort of desperately went for the Gideon's Bible. I think Trish knew how sick I was, but uh, so funny, she didn't really get sick. She got something, but it was like it wasn't what I had. And it was cold and snowing in Alaska. Just, you know, you can imagine the dead of winter. <laughs> it's the worst. Uh, I remember being in Seattle because you fly from Seattle. It's a three and a half hour flight, or four hours around there. It's a beautiful flight, by the way, from there to uh, Anchorage. You see some, some beautiful country of Canada, and you see nothing there, by the way. I remember being there, and having to go get on that plane to Anchorage, and sitting there at the, in the dining room at breakfast, I couldn't eat anything. I tried to eat some oatmeal. I was just devastated with sickness, you know, and, and the waiter came over, and he said, uh, Only time will make a difference here. You know, you need time. 
And that was a very kind of, you know, I took that like, is this an angel? This is good. That in time I will be healed. In other words, he had, there was a positive comment. And then I remember I would reach for the, and I can't tell you the scriptures I saw, but they healed. The scriptures healed me. I wish I'd remembered. I'm not, yeah, I'm very kind of fluid as a person. I don't remember. I just kind of, I'm now. I'm now, now, now. So I don't kind of <laughs> write things down, and I, I should have. I mean, I don't want to beat myself up over it, but the scriptures I turned to, I read them, and I said, well, Lord, if you're ready to take me now, I'm ready to go with you. I was a complete peace, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just, a peace that surpasses all understanding, absolutely. I was at peace, meaning if it was my time to go, you, you won't find me kicking and screaming. I'm sorry about that phone. You won't find me kicking and screaming. Indeed, I will not kick and scream. I was ready. Uh, and the Lord said to me, in the scriptures, not yet, for you are he your healing is nigh. And I believed him. And I said, okay. And I didn't go to the doctor, which was very, very intelligent on my part, because, and I remember being in Patri with Patricia's mother in her home, it was snowing outside, beautiful big flakes falling down and just falling and falling and falling. And her mother was in one side of the room. I was on the couch, just completely um, miserable. Uh, beyond misery. And there we were, just all laid out, you know, just kind of... Uh, it just got really bad up there. But then, as I said, I've... In coming back, I remember we had... Uh, oh, I went to the EMP Museum, the Experience Music Project in Seattle. I was so miserable, I couldn't enjoy it. I did go to everything. I enjoyed it as much as I could. But it just this terrible flu thing, symptoms, you know, again, and it got, came to a head in Alaska in the hotel room. And then it, from that prayer, from that scripture, that night, we were up there two nights already, it was that second night. Um, we were in this, uh, this hotel, which is usually a, uh, a resort, but we were there early. It was snowing already, but it, but it was before ski season. So it must have been around Thanksgiving time maybe just before Thanksgiving. And I was in the hotel, and, and what was interesting, it was kind of like the Overlook Hotel, <laughs> you know, which is the Awani Hotel in, in Yosemite, or the uh, up at Hood River, the exterior of the hotel used in The Shining. It felt like the horror movie in a way, because there were people kind of getting ready for the winter crowd that were gonna come in, and there's you know, empty halls, empty rooms, empty, everything was empty. And uh, so I couldn't go with Trish. Anyway, from that point forward, that night forward, I started improving a little by little. But when I would breathe, I would wake up because the wheezing was so loud and so bad. And in, 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 it was almost harmonizing with itself at times. That I, I, it would wake me up, the sound of the wheezing. I, I've never wheezed like that before. And so again, it was smacking of something artificial and not, not it was not a... Uh, natural bug or any bug that I'm familiar with. Apparently other people had it. We all had it at the same time. It was whether it was Alex Jones's uncle, a friend here in New Mexico and elsewhere. Everyone, everyone but it was spotty who would affect it. It affected some people, not others. But once you had it, you would not infect anyone around you. You could breathe on them, cough on them, whatever you want. And it, you know, it did not spread. It would have been a real danger if that had spread to Patricia's mother, for example. So not a, not a not a worry. So, anyway, it felt like I was shutting down and like I was going to just go ahead and expire. And then the Lord said, "No. You know this will pass." And then I remember getting back to Seattle again, having dinner with a friend, using uh, using the martini for a. A, a kind of a medicinal thing. Well, it did help. It, 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 you know, it did help. I mean, not too far, you know, one or two, you know. And then some kind of seafood we had, then, then sleep that night. Then the next day, flying back to New Mexico, I felt like, well, you know, it was a little bit better. Not, not home free, not kicking the, a little bit better. And then, and then home to recuperate. 
and it took about a month to to recover after that with bouts of high fever at times and things like that so it didn't just go away but after about say five weeks of this thing six weeks it was finally seemed to be gone and that's when I was led to the vitamin C after that it seemed like I was a magnet for any kind of illness coming along no it's hard you know <laughs> First of all, what you have to understand is, by faith we live. By faith I survived. I believed God, and God was true to that, to what I believe he told me, which is not now. You know, not now. And I went with that through faith, and I lived. When many, maybe up to half, didn't. I know. That's why they covered it up in the news. I, I read about the cover-up, and, and I, I'm going, oh, my God, they covered this up because this was so bad. The, dead, the kill rate was so bad. How do you, how do you like that story? <laughs> and I can't chalk it up to, some, you know, to somebody doing it to me on purpose, or I may have had a, some kind of a makeup where it happens, but I, who knows? I don't know where I contracted the bug. I just noticed it the first day we, you know, when we go somewhere, a lot of times we'll stay in Albuquerque just for overnight because, because the plane leaves at 6 a.m. or something. And that's when I noticed it then. But it wasn't bad. It was just coming on, you know, in Albuquerque. Anyway. Uh, through faith, I was healed. Not instantaneously in this case, but through faith, I, let me put it a better way. Through faith, I didn't die. Not that, you know, I didn't even care if I lived or died at that point. I mean, I, I knew that I, that I knew Francesca and Trish would be okay, you know, if, if, I, if I left. So I had the peace of that of not leaving them in the lurch. But at the same time, <laughs> you know, at the same time, um, I didn't care if I died or not. No, you see, he said not now. I went with that. It wasn't my desire. At that point, it had been beaten out of me. I just didn't care. Death and life seemed to be two sides of the same coin by that point. I didn't know whether I was dead already or whether I was living. That's, I was a little bit delirious. Anyway, faith... The Bible says a mustard seed, you know, they're trying to make a point that mustard seed's really small. With just that much faith, you can move mountain. Yes, you can move mountains. You can move stars. You can do just about anything with faith. We haven't had faith. You haven't had this kind of faith. But what I was going to lay on you, as I said, keeping track of all my threads here today, is I was going to lay on you this idea and we'll just plant this seed because the Lord is about to increase the faith seven to seventy fold of his flock. Oh, not just because for no reason. It's because of the evil that is ramping up. You know, the rise of Antichrist, which I'm likening to a spirit of Antichrist and not getting into the game of which which one is it? Is Obama the beat? You know, I don't want to play those games. You know, I, I'll leave that to the experts. That's not the kind of prophetic stuff I do anyway. You know what I mean? It's just not, that's really very, you know, I, I can't, I don't want to criticize people doing it. I'm just going to stay away from that. But, you know, definitely in the Pope and Obama, you see the Antichrist. You know, you see the literal Antichrist, not just the spirit of Antichrist. You see Antichrist. And ironically, the Catholic Church, which I'm not going to bash, because I feel a lot of the stuff with the Pope being the Antichrist are, and we've had every Pope being the Antichrist, and we've had Ronald Reagan being the Antichrist, we've had presidents, and we've had all kinds of things by people that were experts. So I have to turn away from them. All of them were evangelicals, uh, you know. So the Catholics are split. You have evil ones and good ones. You have some marvelous work the Catholics have done in terms of cataloging the demons and who they are and what they do, which are soldiers of Satan, is what they are, and having lots and lots of information about demonology and lots of information about exorcism. And most people that, that 
get thrown into mental hospitals, many of them, need deliverance, need an exorcism. And the fact that they're now having to employ more and more exorcists because, believe it or not, folks, around the world, the supernatural manifestations of, of the demonic, I mean stuff that you would see in something like a movie like Constantine or you know, that level, is starting to happen more and more around the world as we get closer to this, to this sort of breaking point. So the Lord will increase the power of his people now to meet the rise of the evil. I know I'm laying something on you real heavy. I can hear you going, but I don't feel it, Brother Z. It's like, just, just, you just have to not think about this. Through faith you will receive it. Through intellect you will not. Through, through, through weighing this or that you won't. Through logic you will not. But the, the power of this faith is the same thing. I mean, you want to call it the latter rain, you can. The latter rain meets the rise of the evil, does it not? And so, with this faith, you will be able to do things you had only dreamed of or perhaps even just fantasized about in the past. Through faith, the body of Christ, I'm taking off from from. Hebrews 11 here, and I'm going ahead and I'm just, because you know all those verses. I'm not going to go back over them. You know, it's through faith, Abraham and all the various people of all the, 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 the great acts of the Bible that have occurred. Uh, you know, Paul goes over some of them. And, and you know, it's a very important, uh, can you believe there are evangelicals that would like to get rid of Paul from the Bible? There are people that wanted to fight me and told me I hated God because I dared to suggest that that Paul had issues with homosexuality, when it was, I mean, I didn't say it in a way to put Paul down at all. But that's how they took it. And they wanted to fight me. And I got my information from the background of Roman citizens and Paul's position. So I had actually derived my thesis, and that's, I can't prove it. But if Paul wasn't, then he would be, and, and perhaps even pedophilia, I hate to say that, but if Paul didn't do those things, then he would be the one man in Rome in his position who would have resisted. We know he did. You know, we know he knocked it all, all that. He, he, we know that, you know, so he's a sinner. Oh, God, oh, no. But we know he knocked it all off after the road to Damascus. He was even a murderer. Did you know that? But people don't care about that. It's the homosexuality thing they get all up in arms about. Anyway, he's not the odd man out. He was a Roman. He was typical. He was, a, he was an elite, uh, uh, you know, Roman uh, of, of Jewish descent, but he was very high in the, in the uh, society, okay? At a time where that sort of thing was considered normal. Hint, hint. And... Uh, well, I mean, you know, with children this is what I've, I'm, I'm alluding to. Not a man on man. It's always been around. Women on women. Uh, Paul made that part of his ministry because I believe he had struggled with that and he was giving instruction to people who were in the same boat he was in. And I'm not taking that back. It's perf my statement has to be some kind of... Um, you know, it, but, but where in the Word of God does it say he did that? Well, you, you know, do you study the context of the, of the various people? If you studied Paul, then you'd realize that's why the emphasis, because he's dealing with, because he's saying that he believes that that is the, the path to a lack of wisdom through worshiping created rather than creator, dabbling in a cult. All those things go hand in hand. Not dabbling, I mean, practicing the occult, sorry. Practicing witchcraft, practice, those things all kind of go together. And that's what he said. And today, I'm on a tangent again, but I'm doing it on purpose. Today, he, he, they, they are talking about excising his words uh, regarding this issue wherever they pop up, especially Romans 1 from the Bible, in which he also stated that I believe they're going to use this to excise 
the really crucial aspects of faith, which is the admonishment to not worship the created rather than the creator. There's a lot of things under the guise of this umbrella of using the gay issue again. Using that issue, you could get rid of lots of little things you don't want. <laughs> yes. Well, it's, it's just, uh, I'm, I'm going to order up uh, some more Bibles. I think I'll just make sure I have my analog Bible handy because I may not be able to get my hands on those scriptures. But I don't see the big deal. You know, I don't see it as being... Well, you see, to get it to be okay all the way back to zero, you have to kill everyone on Earth all the way back to Adam, and then it will be okay. Uh, then it will finally be okay. You've got to kill everyone and all cultures, especially Kenya. Did you see Obama going down there and screaming at them that the state is supreme, like Adolf Hitler? He's on that level now. He's, like a, he's beyond the fascistic nature of Hitler. He's now saying the state is supreme and you will not have whatever cultural thing. They have a cultural thing against um, homosexuality there in Kenya. And so he, he just decided to speak down. To, when he lectures people, he talks down to you like you're just an idiot. And so, you know, uh, what could I say? Let me get back to the issue well, one more thing about Paul and his being a Roman citizen who, I mean, I say he murdered people, no one bats an eye. I say he may, he may have had sex with a man, everyone goes, oh, I'll kill you! <laughs> well, you Christians in the body of Christ, you've got some work to do. If that's your reaction, you're, you're sick. You, you, you have a real problem with God. But I want to get I want to get back to, uh, well, I have no opinion of it. I have no, I don't think any less of Paul or, or more of Paul than I thought. And I've always had that. I've, I mean, doesn't everyone? I thought everybody felt the same way I did. That's how naive I am. Because it just seemed to make sense. I mean, it just seemed that it was normal to think that. I mean, I didn't, you know, just like I know that, you know, there's a whole pagan world there and, Paul at the time was also dealing with the Greeks and, and Greek philosophy and other philosophers, uh, you know, and, and arguing for the Lord, uh, testing his mettle and testing his, uh, his, his, his debating skills to really, to really bring the gospel to uh, the ancient world. In fact, um, he did marvelous work, marvelous work. And then people, some people call him the Anak. Well, so far I've met people that want to take David out of the scriptures and especially Solomon and Paul. Feeling that they don't really represent the evangelical. So this is something the Catholics are not about to do. I'm just saying, this is an extreme wing of evangelicalism, but it, it, it's out there. Um, read that. Not just intolerance, but but almost you know you could call that more like more, more or less a hateful person would want to do something like that. Could not let humanity be. An intolerant person could not just allow people to be people, and minister to them where they find them. Rather, you know this this was a, a rude awakening I had when I went into the church. To one in Southern California. Now, when I told the guy I had um, my history with drugs, he just glazed over like I didn't exist. This was my lunch with a pastor. After that, he didn't want me. He wanted someone more perfect. I told him I was struggling with it, and I was right at that time, too. I, and I said, you know, and, and, and the Lord got me clean, clean uh, of it. The Lord did that. I didn't even have much faith. I had just... You know, a time, I mean, Trish knows his story, too. I mean, we had a little bit of faith. I was doing self medicate I had problems from time to time, or I would, whether it be prescription drugs or whatever, I would, I would medicate myself because I, I felt so tortured to, by the world, what people would say and do. I felt so bothered that I, 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 I needed to have, you know, I, I just wanted to escape into a bubble. I told you I've escaped 
thing in my personality. I've like I wrote those songs about going becoming sea creatures. It's in me. I you know I, I make no apology. I, I mean. I, I can't do anything about it. I have to keep an eye on that, right? Well, the drugs were definitely sin, absolutely. It wasn't that I was a master of them. They were a master of me. I was not a master of these drugs. I didn't know if I'd ever be able to get off or if I was going to die. But the Lord got me off. And at times, I, I just didn't think I would make it because there would be times I'd be so depressed and so up, so down and I just had to have a fix, you know, I just had to have a, a, a hit, I had to have a, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter what the flavors of the drugs, it's any any very strong drug that was my favorite, you know. Take your pick. It didn't matter, I was a fiend. Most people that know me know that story. And uh, many, most of the evangelicals, of course, that I met, and, you know, this is not to put down all evangelicals, but most of them were horrified by my background and were unwelcoming as a result of that background. And forget about anything else, you know, that, that may be wrong with me that they didn't like, you know, being uh, loud at times, you know, that, that drive, drives them nuts, especially when you're not allowed to speak yet. You have to be quiet for a while and then you can speak when they say, speak! Ruff, 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 you know. <laughs> okay, pretend you're not worshiping Satan. It's <laughs> ruff, <laughs> ruff. <laughs> Dasha, Dasha comes running. Uh, what do you want, Dasha? Uh, Oh, oh, all right. There you go. We got my dog going. Oh, that's funny. Well, anyway, so the Lord is going to increase the faith of his people. Now she's off on attention. And he's going to increase the faith many fold. As much as you can handle. And I know quite a few of you who've been involved in miraculous ministry in the past where you've, you've seen things like raising the dead pretty much are, well, I'm a good example of that. But, you know, um, you, you've seen things, you know, had a glimpse of how powerful these miracles are and how powerful a moving of God can be. It's so humbling. It just puts you on your face and on your knees and... You, but you're so grateful that, oh my God, yes. We've gone through such a dry period, have we not, ladies and gentlemen? I mean, not dry, you know, here and there, there's miraculous things happening, but in general, it's been very dry. You don't have the signs and wonders ministers wandering around, you know, which is all you, wandering around doing things because of that faith. But with an increase in faith, you will do those things because you'll say, gee, I just tried this out and it really worked and I wonder if I go for more. You know, it's going to happen in that way, just a very practical, pragmatic way. And I don't care what you apply it to, but it's meeting the evil that's rising. You know, it's not the best thing in the way. It'd be great if you could have more faith with everything being calm. <laughs> you could convince the whole world of for Christ in about a month. The whole world would be worshiping the Lord. There'd be no problem. But the Lord's never going to do that, or at least not in this not so far, okay? I, I won't say never for the Lord. Um, but the rising of your faith, okay, is not in response to, but in concert with the rising of Antichrist, is the rising of Christ. The rising of Christ means the rising of faith and the works of Christ. The works of Christ also refer to those things that are called miracles. And um, there is no shortage of them. And I mean, you know, anything from moving mountains to moving stars to moving dimensions to moving, I don't care what it is. There is just nothing that you, you know, won't be able or you will feel like you can engage in a lot more prayer because nothing is off your table. You don't have to pray in your own understanding anymore. If it's outrageous, you can still believe for it because you see the reward is for your faith. The Lord rewards those with faith. 
every time. The problem is we've suffered a great lock, lack or loss of faith over the last 2,000 years. And um, to where now we're just very, we're, we're not even a mustard seed anymore. We're just limping along on fumes. That's about to end. And I mean, when I say about, I mean now. I mean, if you want to know how much faith you have, check the ramping of the evil. As you see definitions of, you know, good becoming bad and bad becoming good, and as they change times and laws, as it says in the book of Daniel for the Antichrist, right? We definitely have the Antichrist of Daniel. It's already fulfilled here. Well, I, I can't point to any one person and just say, we've got the, the beast, do we not? We have the Antichrist. We don't have the, uh, the tattoo yet that goes in the hand or the forehead, but I'm pretty convinced that not only have they worked on it, it's going, it's, it's, it's a technology, some people think it's going to be the third strand of DNA that's, that's put in us through that, through that thing. That makes us uh, not eligible for the Lamb's Book of Life because you're no longer the same DNA. It's just like the same thing as the days of Noah. Pay particular attention to Isaiah 24, as far as earth changes, which we'll see many of, and Matthew 24, in which Jesus prophesies about the days of Noah, and at the same time, the coming of the Son of Man, isn't the coming of the Son of Man also the upwelling of faith in his people? Isn't that the same thing as coming, you know, toward? Absolutely. You see, so it's all coming together, right? And um, it's a, a very exciting thing. And the gifts are given without repentance. In other words, could you use your faith for evil? Yes, you probably could, unfortunately. If someone decides to become evil, who is good, who has faith, they will not lose their faith. I'm hoping that doesn't happen. You, at the same time, will get all this knowledge that you didn't have before. Because of that faith, you'll be entering into realms that you never perceived or believed would be possible. But all of this is to help bring the body up of beleaguered souls. I told someone about all the beleaguered souls I see out there. I see a lot of, and a lot of, you know, and I'm kind of beleaguered too. A lot of you are my friends. And I told it to, to this one um, minister guy, and he got mad at me. Yes, I... I told him about people who are struggling and, you know, I dare not tell him my own problems because he'd reject me completely. But, you know, how people struggle with sin. And I saw this one guy, this young man saying, you know, you have to eradicate sin or you're really not eligible for Jesus. And I'm like, Jesus came for the sick. He came for the sinner, not the righteous. And uh, the people that I talked to, well... They don't think I'm righteous, and I don't think they're righteous. I mean, we're righteous in our intent and our spirit, perhaps, but our flesh is, we work on this stuff, but we're just not. We're more like Paul, where he said, the things I don't want to do, I do, and the things I should be doing, I don't do, and I'm mad about that, and I want to do better. And that's kind of like the people I know out there that are following the Lord. You're, you know, like, like me in that respect. You know, we want to do better. We know we can I am doing better than I, than I used to do a long time ago. But it could be a lot better than that even. And I'll tell you something about sin. You know, but th there's where this young man was right. Sin, sin opens doors that, that allow the devil, you know, entrance and the demon's entrance to be able to exploit your weaknesses. And when you get purified, you sh those doors are shut and you have strength. I was pretty righteous at one time, I remember, when I, I really was following a very strict kind of Daniel diet, and I had, you know, not a drink, and, you know, I was kind of moving along, and I actually, you know, I lost a bunch of weight, and I was in, you know, really good shape, and I, I remember walking, we, we camped out at the, along a river bank up in Chama, not Chama, but, uh, where was it, Chief? What's the name of that desire? Nambe. Nambe. And uh, we had a little tent trailer. I mean, that's how we started with this whole RV. And now it's, 
it's like we're in a bubble, but we started with a tent trailer, and uh, we're by a creek, and I really loved that time, and I, I ate some, like, tempeh strips. I had so much energy, I walked r right up this hill to the to the, where this waterfall was, and I, no fatigue, nothing. And I started getting kind of high, I was telling people, oh, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't smoke, you shouldn't, you know what I mean? So pride was found in me. Oh, yes. I became prideful. I didn't realize it at the time. Folks, it was innocent. I, but I just, you know, I just felt that, you know, whatever I was doing was the thing and then everyone else should follow likewise. And the Lord slapped me down. The next thing I know, I was off the path and I lost my way and all that stuff went out the window. And my ass was kicked and I deserved it because, you see, I was shown that the worst sin that I've ever done was the sin of pride in that circumstance. Far worse than, say, being drunk. <laughs> Can you believe it? And so I never went back to that sort of thing again. I, I haven't been ready. You know, in other words, the Lord will completely purify me when I'm ready to not be the temptation of being prideful. In other words, of thinking something good of myself. In fact, feeling that people should follow along. Oh, I apologize if I, you know, this was years ago, but I had pictures of myself and I really thought that I was, uh, you know, that I had, uh, people told me, wow, you look great. You should just, whatever you're doing, keep going. But well, I would have been fine and I could have kept going, but I had one problem and that's pride. And the only way you could knock the pride out of me was to knock the whole thing down. So it's all built on a, you know, a castle made of sand. You know, so a foundation made of quicksand. I erected my own Tower of Babel in a way, but I erected my own stairway to heaven, if you will, uh, on my own works. I relied not, you know what I mean? It, 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 it was a, 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 fa a faith killer as well. And so you see... This is the um, this is the problem that we have uh, sometimes with righteous works. But anyway, uh, hold on a second, please. Okay, continuing on. Well, you know, I didn't, at two or three in the morning, it was fine, the power went out at that time, and we were here, and I, and I was, uh, I was, I, I was, uh, dealing with that power outage, and I, I put the podcast up, but I don't think I, I, I want to go with it at all. Uh, I'd rather go with this, because this was the essence of it. Okay, so, so what happened is um, I was dealing with that power outage and I was just thinking about what that meant and the, the generator kicked in and the generator, the lights kind of like a woo, like, you know, sort of like when you have a generator on that's not working too well. Anyway, uh, we made it through that and I did maybe two and a half hours and um Uh, there were a lot of fits and starts too for some reason plus I did it on my my good recorder which I wish I had kept but it seems that sometimes when I'm putting that podcast onto the you know Pro Tools session uh, to be outputted to be uploaded I guess what happens is you know strange things happen Whereas with with this method, with this method, it seems that uh, it goes right up from the from the from the iPhone recorder. It goes right up to the site, and I don't have time to get in the way. Does that make sense? Because this thing about the upwelling of faith, this word about that, think about it. It's, it's equilibrium and in response to the rising of this Antichrist spirit or this evil 
time. And it makes great sense that we will start seeing more signs and wonders. Now, you say, well, the people in... The people in... Um, and it's a lot of noise around here, so I, I don't know that I'd be able to continue now. You say, well, these people that were martyred in in the Middle East, they uh, they have signs and wonder ministries now. They 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 really have been tested with their faith. Or the underground China Church, it's not at all all around the. You know, there's been faith that's been brought up. No, not the way that I mean is is it's it's global and it's palpable and it's everywhere. It's everyone. Everyone that belongs to the Lord, everyone that exercises their faith will be increased now. And it, it has, it's more of a physics issue in a sense. You know, it's almost akin to that. I mean, it's a personal issue as well, but it's not, you know, based on merit or I, you know, it, it, I wouldn't be saying this. Sure, other people have it rougher and they've been showing a, a strong faith. And so they'll have, you know, this supernatural experience. No, it's not based on merit. It's just God's people are being given this in relation to the evil ramping up. And it's a, like a one-to-one -one kind of thing. So it's very, very powerful. Meaning any witchcraft, any sorcery, any attempt at, at, at taking over the whole thing, you know, any attempt at eradication of God's people, any of these things, there's protection, there's blessing. And it's not limited to any one thing, it's to use your imagination. That faith can be applied to anything. There's no rule on that. If you've been given it, you'll know it. You'll test it out a little bit, then you go, oh wow, well let's do, go for more. You know, let's pray for so-and-so who's always been unhappy, I wanna pray for their happiness right now. I know if I pray in Jesus' name for their happiness, they shall be happy by whatever, by however they will be. Confidence in this area will also strengthen the body of Christ, will strengthen the love of God and the love between people rather than suspicion, division, and hatred which has been fomented by the powers that be to separate all people from their humanity, black from white and gay from straight or, you know, all, well, whatever other kinds of groups, all these groups, all these ethnic groups, all these people with different, you know, that, that fly different flags for their behavior or whatever it is, all kinds of, all this division is, and I actually had this notion today earlier that they don't want us to get together in movie theaters. I saw a very, very good movie called Southpaw, which, you know, just when you think Hollywood can't crank one out. Antoine uh, Fuqua, the uh, director, extraordinary. I've been a fan of his for, for over many films, and he's an extraordinary director. And um, uh, gritty, he's gritty, very gritty. And so it's... We were on an emotional roller coaster, you know, crying and then, you know, cheering for our guy, expert, great acting, great story. It's just, it's, it should be what a basic movie is. Uh, but these basic good movies are so few and far between, admitted. But here's one. You can't say that, 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 that all the movies are bad. It is good for a human to sit in a theater with people not like you, you know, div with a diverse group of people and have a collective experience of, of similar emotions, cheering, crying, whatever, together, because that brings humanity together. You see, that shows us how the bond we have in just being human with each other. And it's extraordinary how these people get us to fight. The very people that are saying peace and love are the ones that are promoting hatred and division. Have you noticed that, folks? Have you noticed that they're the ones doing it, literally, in their think tanks and their social programs? They're causing permanent divisions because they feel they can, you know, with people divided, they can rule. If they divide us from ourselves, they, we, you know, if they could divide us from our faith, they could rule. If they, if they could just get our souls, they could rule. They say, I am sorry for them. They're very short-sighted and they're very stupid, but, you know, it's the bulk of us here 
elect these people, you know, so it shows the real stupidity, the real ignorance, I should say, is among them. And it's so, it's, it's gotten so bad, you know, but I believe that's why the Lord is responding with this call, this, this, this gift of faith given without repentance, given now in this time to, you see, it, it, it counters perfectly the rise of the evil. So you all can't escape. I know I love and I love to escape, but we have to be kind of front and center with our faith because today's harvest is the biggest the Lord will ever receive. The higher it ramps up in evil, the more people are susceptible or needing or wanting so much to be saved, but they're weary and leery of the churches because they've gone they've been abused there, so they don't want to go back there. But they're gonna find that uh, you know, they enter into the kingdom. And they're once in the kingdom, I mean, they're going to feel the strength they never felt before. You know how you all feel weak right now? You feel kind of hopeless. You feel sort of discoordinated in a way. Unable to, 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 to just do the simplest thing, to share a verse of scripture, to, to do well. You know, that will turn into sharing more to, to That faith will turn into doing a lot of the things that you wish you had done before, but you hadn't. And now you will. And um, try it out. Prove me wrong. Go ahead. Prove me wrong. Try anyway. You won't be able to do it. You're going to have to get up and admit, yes, yes, God is moving. Oh, my God. He's moving. And things are happening. And it looks like as they bring in signs and wonders, so will the Lord through you. Bring in signs and wonders. And when we say signs and wonders, we don't mean, uh, you know, uh, moving, using telekinesis to move a pencil across a table. It's a lot more than that. So I urge you to, um, to really get into the Word, you know, obviously. You go ahead and read Hebrews 11, you know, because this is, see with me, it's always like if there's something going on with the scripture, it's because there's something going on right now in the spirit, not uh, looking at this theoretically or, you know, they used to put me asleep in theology school because it was never, you know, in Bible school, because it was never about what was happening, you know, this is what's happening, I say, you're involved, it's your life. It's it's not like, oh, that scripture's, you know, just something to look at theoretically. No, no, no. If the scripture's mentioned, it's because it's going on. It's going off. You know? Maybe the three hours I spent in the wee hours this morning were just like, perhaps they were, um, maybe... That was show prep for this. But you know very well that the Lord raises up his own to meet the challenge of a rising tide. He doesn't let it go lopsided. Have you noticed that throughout history and Bible history and world history? Have you noticed it? There always seems to be some kind of, um, when the evil ramps up, some kind of good. You know, maybe in World War II, the Lord rose up armies against Hitler to stop him before he could really, you know, finish the job. A lot of pain and suffering happened, just like there has been already here. I mean, around here, we cry all the time at, uh, at, at what these people are doing and, and the people who are hypnotized and just enjoying themselves as they dance off the cliff. But tears of frustration and tears of feeling inadequate to do anything about it uh, will dry up now because we have what we can do about it. And, um, you know, to those of you who have been shut-ins, what it means, a modicum more of faith means you're not shut-ins anymore. You walk wherever you will. You go wherever you will. Wherever you will to go, that's where you will go, and you will go in confidence. Others, 
with chronic illnesses will even realize there's been some kind of a turnaround even there. Others have been plagued at night with all kinds of whispering in your ears from uh, you-know-who. You'll be able to re-examine your lives and see where you have doors open, letting those things in. Shut them and those voices go away. Those voices are demonic. They're demons. They know everything about you. They know your name, when you were born, all the things that have happened to you. They know everything that you know about yourself. They know, but they know even more than you know about yourself. Oh yeah, sometimes when you pray to God, they'll answer you. If you're praying to God out loud, sometimes they'll answer, but it's always something like this. Well, of course that happened. Of course they did that. Do you have a hunch about it? Well, of course it happened. Now you're going to have to live with it. No, you don't have to live with anything that is untoward. And, um, you know, just give up. But always with this idea that, oh, well, that's the way the world is. Here, you want more information? I guess your bubble's popped. Hey, friend, you better just give up, right? And accept the way things are, right? They'll always come at you with that angle to accept the way. Th you better just accept the way things are and be grateful you're here. Oh, it's okay. If, uh, you can see, right? I, you can see people justifying through those voices, which are demonic, justifying their, themselves. Say, oh, you're, you know, I was just born this way. There's really, this, this is just, okay, well, I'm just going to have to learn to accept it. And uh, that's the way it is. And when the voices are doing that in your head, okay, those are demons. Let me be very clear. Those are specific demons who have names and uh, are, have allegiances to other demons and other circles and other social circles and may even be sent by people you know because the witches are always sending demons. The other thing we talked about earlier today is uh, the witchcraft. I made the example of um, how most people don't know they're under the power of witchcraft because the witches conceal themselves. They don't say they're witches, the real ones. And no, they conceal themselves. I was talking to one the other day, talking to someone the other day, rather, not necessarily a witch, but, but knows about it from her own family and stuff. And, uh, and could be, you know, I, I don't know. People, whatever they say about themselves does not count with me anymore. It's, it's what they do, not what they say, right, folks? Okay, so, you know, but what they do is they'll find someone like a young man, someone that looks like they got some promise or whatever, and they, and they get a hold of him. And, you know, the, the guy thinks the thoughts he's thinking are their thought. And they can really move him up. They can really make things work for him, or they can take away. I mean, they're very powerful. And um, there's consequences, too. They can, they can hurt your health and ruin you, and you may never recover. And you may ask the Lord, please send back that witchcraft, and the restoration is there, but it's just not, you know, there are still consequences to what happened. You know, the, like if you get shot in battle, you know, you got a wound there, and it may have healed a certain way, but it's not 100%. Uh, similarly. I cannot overemphasize how dangerous the witches and witchcraft is. If you're one of these people that gives up so easily, I mean, yes, they want your mind, and from there they get your soul, of course, and they get your obedience, right? But before that, before you become conscious of them being there, they get control and they buy and sell you behind your back to other witches elsewhere. And um, they've been working on this thousands of years. I think they kind of probably know what they're doing. Some have many slaves and all that. Well, with this faith, you can break their spells, and, you know, but the Lord expects you to have enough discernment to stay out of trouble. I have been, I've had animals slain by them. I've been poisoned and hurt and, you know, I have not been the best example, but I have been a survivor. And they've thrown some pretty strong ones at me. But um, with more faith, I could do more. And I like to do more. And then that summarizes pretty much what we talked about. Uh, 
yes, that's all going on. Yes, you could have a social circle with, you know, several, say, you know, men and women. And say y'all went to school together and say one or two of them are witches and they have control of, of the men. All of them. And the other women have no clue. And they can then whisper things into them in the middle of the night to get them to change their policies on things. Uh, they can have sex with them at night. You know, any kind of thing they want to do. And to keep the allegiance going. And they can eat, and they can also trade like trading cards or buy and sell. They can do all that. And uh, the host group there, the social group, is none the wiser. Uh, but whatever those the there are these witches and witchcraft, it's always you know to lead people into cancer, to lead them into into um, cheating on their spouses, to lead them into you know all these different avenues into drugs or drinking or uh, any kind of behavior that would be self-destructive, uh, ultimately that's where they lead. Or obesity, or, you know, uh, whatever else. Um, it's really been a problem in our society. It's especially a problem in America right now. Because, you know, they, they uh, some of these, you know, these women, especially when they're young, uh, it's generational, as you may know. But they have, you know, a hundred sex slaves. Those would be men who are controlled by them and uh, who, who, who are under their power and who are having a weird kind of sex with them on a, on a, uh, on a regular basis, all secretive, without anyone else knowing about it, and may even be best friends with the wives of these men. You know, like, oh, hey, Sally, hey, you know, let's go root for the ball team, you know. When behind the scenes, all this evil stuff is roiling about crazily. And no one wants to talk about it. I mean, today I've crossed the line here, have I not? Nobody wants to talk about this sort of thing. I remember one person took, took great pride in popping things into my head and then having me act on it like it was my idea. And then I eventually just started playing along, realizing I had a real nasty witch on me and I couldn't, you know, I wasn't strong enough to fight them. I didn't have enough faith. So I, I acted the fool until I could get away. And even from a distance, they kept coming after, you know, wanting to punish, destroy. Slowly that grip of power waned. But I even got, you know, perverse pleasure out of hurting myself, knowing that they just want me to go down the tubes. Uh, wanting to get vengeance on me for daring to question the world and daring not to play along in their little game. And for that, I am to be killed. Well, I just multiply that by the amount of men and women on the planet and, and, and take a distribution of, say, 10% of witches. And uh, the numbers are staggering in terms of how many slaves there are how many people living who think their lives are their own, but they're not. And then it's the trading, you know, uh, men and women, like trading cards. I, I talked to someone about that the other day. I, you know, I mean, my friend, I asked, I go, why do they do it? Like, they'll find someone they want to target, and they'll all jump on that person and sort of just steal everything that he's got inside. I told you about this before. You know, talents and everything else, leaving him kind of like a zombie. <laughs> you know, just kind of like a feeble person, you know, just taking everything that was that was him, his soul, and almost like dividing it up. I've seen that a couple of times. So I was so alarmed, I asked my friend about it, and he says, oh, they, they just do that because they feel like it. In other words, if they because they can, because they have powers. So if they decide to, you know, so everyone's afraid of them, so most people, they don't talk about the existence of witches, they have, pretend they don't exist, but then they kowtow because they don't want to get hurt. Uh, a friend was married, I had, and he's married to a witch that was really evil. And he got to the point where he would, uh, eventually they got divorced. But before that, uh, 
he just had to really mind his P's and Q's because, uh, you know, I mean, she she basically threw a whammy on him to break his neck, and he did. You know, it's horrible, horrible human being. Uh, but, hey, there is God. And there, you know, when you're on that side of things, which is called the other side by Jim Morrison, that's the side he's talking about, by the way, the witchcraft side. Got me? Okay. When I when we say the other side of the Zephyr Report, that's what we mean. We don't mean some exotic thing you can't figure out. We're just talking about the realm of the occult, witchcraft, that sort of thing. Okay? There are two sides. You have to actually have an allegiance or join that side in order to be accepted by it. You can't just, like, give it lip service. And, you know, like, like they recognize their own, like we recognize our own, you know. There's also got to have something to do with it in terms of how, how people are made. Um, but many of was fake. It's all about mind control and uh, social control. But that mind control and soul control and social control is the um, same thing practiced in, you know, when you have the MK this and mind control uh, uh, science. Ultimately, witchcraft is the oldest mind control that there is. Getting people to do things and thinking it's their idea when they otherwise wouldn't think that. Or getting people to, to destroy themselves. And when they are unconscious that they're doing so, and they're destroying themselves bit by bit, becoming like a living human sacrifice in slow motion, they're all the people watch who all know what's going on, and they say nothing to the host, nothing to the target, and they just watch them self-destruct. That's a satanic ritual. Uh, that's a sacrifice. That's, if that doesn't scare you, your remedy is Jesus Christ, the living God. Be in him and be strong in him and be obedient with him and be super faith with him and he'll steer you through that because that's a minefield. You know, you're at work, you got a good job, you come across one of them, you don't even know it. They try to get control, then they test the control. They have a friend come over, they have a friend visit or whatever to see if the plan they had put in effect worked. Do you realize how many people, folks out there, are not even living authentic lives, meaning that they think they're, that they're living by their ideas and their wits? when their wits and their ideas have nothing to do with their life tra tra trajectory anymore. It's, it's, how, uh, it's other people and witches who are running their life and they don't even know it. And um, the other aspect of all of it, of course, it, it, it goes into, you know, there's ancient temples, ancient, you know, factions, ancient religions, who all are at interplay with the witchcraft with each other. So that's how someone could look at, say, the Whitney Houston thing and her daughter dying, and um, and then basically come up with a theory of uh, there was two sacrifices there, so there's going to be two 9/11 events by the by the blood moon, and I've seen someone tie all that together, and it's like I, I don't doubt I don't doubt there's there's truth in what this man is saying. I think he was called Mothman. Uh, he's got that up right now. Um, it's very interesting. He uses a hexagram and all this. I'm not a big fan of that sort of thing, but, but, but yes, um, um, uh, they serve these temples and these various organizations. One you could call the global government organization. That's one. And the witches serve that. Another would be, say, the music business. Another could be the film business. And they have different, and they're people that, uh, just wind up extraordinarily dead. I mean, with music, it's, it's shameful. There's no excuse for a lot of the people to wind up dead. I mean, this last one was almost, was just, you know, and people say, oh, it's just a weird curse. There's nothing, no, no, there are people that do understand all that. I'm not going to give credence to that guy with his numerology theory about it. Uh, I mean, that's fine to, you know, use numbers to come up with a prediction. I think more or less he was trying to warn about the Pope's visit, which is another big one, uh, in the lead up to the, to the blood moon. During Yom Kippur, uh, High Holy Days of Israel, it's all kind of culminating at the uh, end of September there, September 23rd through the 28th, let's say. And, um, you know, just to, to be heads up and be aware and be praying. 
I have no doubt that you people can pray, and whatever result you pray will will occur. I don't I don't believe that it's set in stone. I think a lot of these people that participate in these rituals, if you point it out to them after the fact, they go, "Oh yeah." But leading up to it, they would have no clue what part they're playing. And that may truly be the case in the music business. But I don't know. All I know is that uh, our faith is to be increased to meet this um, to meet this upwelling of evil. Faith will be stronger in the world than evil. Will people use it? Yes, they will once they see what it means. Oh, yeah. Faith that hasn't been around in a long time. Faith that manifests results instantaneously. Faith that is seen, not completely unseen, but faith in things unseen, but the results are seen. Not maybe or, gee, I've prayed, now I feel better. No, no, you know, it'll be like, we better be really careful what I'm praying for here because you know what, it's going to have a result, so... So that's all I got to say. That's it. That's the main gist of it. And uh, I bid you shalom and peace. I, I bid you great upwelling of faith in Jesus' name. That that faith will be used to heal the body. Because Lord knows we need healing now. We need it now more than ever. And I will see you next time. As soon as I can. Oh yes, I will see you next time.